problem 8.8 .8 asks us to do two things. Calculate the resolved shear stress in three different planes for a particular direction. And second, based on those results, uh, find out which planes, uh, which systems are most favorably oriented towards slip. So let's look first at the direction. The direction is the one, one bar, one direction. So that means for x, we're looking at 1. For y, we're looking at negative 1. So that's going to be over here somewhere. So let's show that. Okay, that's negative 1. And for z, we're looking at 1 bar. So, our direction starting at zero looks like this. Here's the origin, and the direction moves up and to the left that way. So our planes that we're looking at are the 110 plane. So we have x-intercept at 1 a y-intercept at 1, and a z-intercept never. So that means we have this plane. This is the 1, 1, 0 plane. Next is the 0, 1, 1 plane. So we have no intercept of x, an intercept of y of 1, and an intercept of z at 1. So that is this plane. in the one zero one plane. We have a x intercept of one, no y intercept, and a z intercept of negative one down here. So our plane looks like this. Never intersecting the y-axis. Now our actual force is drawn along, is applied along the x-axis, the 1, 0, 0 vector. And that stress is 4 megapascals. So 
So everything is in, with respect to this direction. To find the angle between this direction of the stress and this slip vector, which is represented by Greek letter lambda, we can look at the plane that is common to both of them, which is represented by the red line here and yellow line here and the x-axis. Is that angle lambda the x-axis with its direction of stress. And if we look at how far it goes, we have go one unit cell in X, one unit cell in Y, and one unit cell in Z. So to find the distance from the origin to the corner, we can say that the distance is equal to the square root, change in x squared plus the change in y squared plus the change in z squared. Each of these is 1, so it's 1 squared plus 1 squared. 1 squared. So we have a distance here of the square root of 3. The adjacent here has a distance of 1.0. So to find this angle, lambda, lambda is equal to the inverse cosine of the adjacent over the hypotenuse and brings out 54.7 degrees. So now we have our angle between the direction of the force and the slip direction. We will plug that into our key equation for the resolved shear stress. That's the nominal stress times the cosine of this lambda we just found times the cosine of phi. What's phi? Phi is the angle between this direction of stress and each of the three planes that we determined. So we will draw the planes that show these angles. The first one will be for the 110 plane. And the 110 plane is perpendicular to the x, y plane. And here's the direction of our stress. that gives a 45 degree angle with the direction of stress. 
So this, this angle phi for the 110 plane. Our next plane is the 101 plane, and that is perpendicular to the XZ plane. plane, and it's the yellow plane that we're considering here. The yellow plane comes from the x-intercept down to the z-intercept, and its normal vector is likewise at 45 degrees. direction of stress. Our third and final angle is a little bit more difficult to see. This is the angle for the 0, 1, 1 plane. The 0, 1, 1 plane is perpendicular to the y, z plane. So looking down at it, here's z, here's y, and our green plane like that. Problem is identifying the angle to this normal vector of that plane because our stress vector is coming straight out of the screen. Could be obvious, but not necessarily. We'll redraw this showing this green normal vector that's going straight out on the YZ plane. And then the stress vector. And we can see now that this is 90 degrees. Well, that's the tough part. We can now use our governing equation to plug our values in. Our nominal stress is 4.0 megapascals. Our angle lambda is 54.7 degrees and our phi changes depending on which plane we are referring to. Phi is the same for the 110 and the 101 bar planes. So our dissolved shear stress for 110 or 101 bar planes, when calculated out, 1.63 megapascals. Our dissolved shear stress for the 0, 1, 1 plane, because we have an angle of 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so our shear stress is 0. This is for part A. Part B asks for the preferred slip systems, and 
we can write those as the one one bar one 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 zero or the one one bar one one zero one bar planes. These are two slip systems that are the preferred of the three considered. Notice the slip systems must have both a direction and a plane in order to be completed. The 0, 1, 1 plane is not considered in here as it has a 0 shear stress and will thus not slip.